In a car in Hopetown with the windows down, I can smell the heat, which bakes the wooden wounds of ribbon-barked gums and marbles the road with mirage. I see the small mountains all around me and think back to my old self, to the Rockies, to those snow-blown giants that held me in their midst. At Banff Natural Hot Springs, I feel as though we are above the clouds, but that's not right because it is raining and the rain creates ripples which give texture to the pool. Gentle steam rises to meet my face as I move through the water. Serendipity swells beyond the memory. Swells so big I feel it for a moment. Feel it through the decade before it slowly slips away like water down a drain. Once, in the middle of January, I returned home from a trip to that first country, so eager to make it to the beach that I skipped the sunscreen, and my skin, recently drained of melanin, went red as it yielded to the heat of a season in reverse. And later on, the shocking sting of my shoulders under the shower head reminded me, as I turned the faucet to cold, of the compromises my body will forever be making, how everything I love is split in half. Halfway up Frenchman's Peak, I look behind me at the steep slope to see the glory bloated rays of light cascading down its side. And the way I can look directly at the sun as it sets over the ocean makes me think nothing can be avoided forever. From this vantage point, everything on earth is congruent and united. When I reach the peak, on my pilgrimage to amalgamation, I can see the glass ceiling between my two selves, and the smaller girl is smiling up through the years, dressed in a snowsuit. No longer afraid she might be erased by each passing birthday, the southern sun, same sun, is shining down on her, and everything I love is a Mobius strip with not one distinct side to speak of.